Fairness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings, I hope and trust I find you well. We have one more experience as we wrap up our week and head right into the weekend. We meet the children of Israel as they walk out of Rephidim. They are headed into the wilderness of Sinai. And we meet them in the book of Exodus. Come with me to verse number 2 and we shall go all the way to verse 5. It reads as follows in my Bible. After they departed from Rephidim, they entered the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. And Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Moses went up the mountain to God and the Lord called to him from the mountain. This is what you must say to the house of Jacob and explain to them. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I carried you on the eagle's wings and brought you to me. Now, if you will listen to me and carefully keep my covenant, you will be my position out of all the peoples, although all the earth is mine. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word and let us spend a moment in prayer. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, dear Lord, we are about to go into your word and we pray that you may help us to keep your covenant. May we become your position out of all the earth. Call us out to be your children. Call us out to be a nation of priests and the kingdom that is chosen. In Jesus' name we have prayed and we ask. Amen. My dear friends, why don't we raise just five points that will carry us throughout the weekend until we meet again on Monday. You know, the good thing is that even though on Monday the children of Israel were stuck in Rephidim, Rephidim will not last forever. We will come out of our Rephidims and continue on our journeys. The Lord has led us through from Monday to Friday. Hasn't he been gracious and kind unto us? And I want to challenge you as we get to point number one. Take time to camp at the foot of our master. Camp at the foot of the Lord. Camp at the foot of his mountain. Take time to be within reach unto the Lord. Spend time in his vicinity. As we go into this weekend, may this be a moment for you to be brought closer to the Lord. May you spend more time in his presence. At point number two, without further ado, I want us to take note of what the Lord says at verse number two. He says unto Moses, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians. I, I wish we could take time to learn from those who have gone before us. We need not have all the calamities before us so that we can learn firsthand. God says, even as I was going with you through the week, you must have seen how I dealt with those who decided to oppose me, how I dealt with those who decided to stand against the word of God. Learn from their mistakes, learn from their mishaps, learn from their lessons, learn from their misfortunes. It is an opportunity to learn. When you see things before others, learn from them. Take time to learn wherever you are. God is saying to the children of Israel and he's saying to you and to myself as you go into this weekend, reflect on how others have performed. Reflect on what has been the end and the demise of those who have gone against the will of God. May this be not your experience. Learn from it and do better. God is saying, make sure this, you shall let the children of Jacob, the ones who need a second chance, you shall make sure you say this unto them. Make sure they get it. And I speak on behalf of heaven and I say, and I'm saying, learn from those who are no more. Learn from their mistakes. At point number three, God does not only call us to learn from those who do well, and I mean from those who do not do well, but he wants us to learn even from our own experiences. One writer says, we have nothing to fear of the future until and unless we forget how the Lord has led us in the past. And he says, this you must also learn. I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to me. This you must not remember. You must not forget. This you must always remember. I am the God who has gone out of his way 
to carry you. I have the I am the God who has come into contact with human beings. I am the God who has done things efficiently. I have elevated you on eagle's wings. I have not left you in that position, but I have lifted you up so that you can come closer to me. I am the God who lifts you up. This you must remember. You and I have an experience, says the Lord. Had it not been for what the Lord had done, had it not been for the Lord on our side, one musician said, we would never be where we are today. As we have gone through the week, remember this, the Lord has been carrying you on his wings. You have not made it to Friday on your own. You have not made it with your own strength and in your own mind. The Lord has been carrying you. At point number four, he says, now that you have seen how I have treated others, now that you have seen how I have treated you, at point number four, if you will listen to me, if you will listen to me, this is a conditional statement, you will be my position. God has been doing all these things and he has been doing them in the hope that a relationship shall ensue. And he says, you will be my position. You will be a priest of a kingdom of priests. He says so in, in another version. God says, I will make you into a kingdom if you will listen to me and keep my covenant. And the covenant follows thereafter in chapter 20. Only the Ten Commandments. It says, if you will keep these, you will become my position. God already holds us. God is already carrying us into a place of safety. And he says for this relationship to continue, for this relationship to mature, you need to do the following. Keep my covenant. Keep my commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. As you go into this weekend, I hope you can start by keeping his seventh commandment tomorrow morning. I hope you can start by keeping all the Ten Commandments. God says, if you do so, this is what is going to make sure, make it a point that you belong to me and I become your father. I become your God. I become your deliverer. I become the one who has rescued you. I become the God of your kingdom, the kingdom where you are going to be a citizen for life. Keep my covenant, if only you will listen. At point number five, as we come to a climax, he says unto them, this you must know, you will be my position, you shall be my kingdom. But above all, at point number five, although all the earth is mine, the God of Israel says, I am an inclusive God. Even though I have called you out, out of all these people, Remember, those I have chosen you from, they are mine too. The Egyptians, they are mine too. Those I have punished, they are mine. And you are mine because I have called you. Not because you're any better than they are, he goes on to say. You were just but a small, a, a small nation, but I loved you. I chose you. I called you out. The Lord loves us. The Lord calls us out. The Lord chooses us out of the rest of the nation so that we can go back and call the rest of them unto him. The Lord does not want a portion of the earth. He says the whole earth is mine. Even those who have not come to the faith, those who are not yet keeping his covenant, they must come to a point where they shall hold on to the lapel of every child of God and say, I have come to know the God who set you free. I have come to know the God who has carried you on his wings. I love that God and I want him to be my God. They will come to the Lord. May this be your experience over the weekend. Call many unto the Lord. As you go into this experience, your refidims, may they come to an end. As you go into this weekend experience, may you come into a relationship with the God who is your maker, the God who is your creator, the God who is the law giver, the Lord who is the judge, and the Lord who is your creator. Until we meet again on Monday, blessings and peace.